Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias of Mike. Guys, we're in the home stretch here. We are at WrestleMania 26. Woo! All right. Now, before I get started running down the card here, um, I have to say something about this WrestleMania. It's it's a weird one. Um, the commentary. Okay, All right, you know what? This commentary team is 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 it has Matt Stryker on it. Now, for those of you who have seen my Lucha Underground videos, you know I love Matt Stryker. However, that's about at least five years removed from where we are now. Matt Stryker is not good on commentary here. He's not. This is a Matt Stryker who knows the spots that are going to happen in the match, and he spoils a lot of them. Um, uh, when, when I get to the main event, I'll talk about one very specific thing that it's even kind of funny that the cameras catch. But uh, it's a shame because if I think if we could take... See, the problem with Matt Stryker is if he's the lead guy doing play-by-play, -play, he's fine because he doesn't get a chance to do a lot of his strikerisms. Like on Lucha, he's a lead play-by-play -play guy. Here he's a he's the third color guy. Like it just it just doesn't work. And it I'm it's really unfortunate. But anyway, let's let's get to this mania cuz this mania is really a mixed bag. There are some really great things in it. There are some really not great things in it. Um, okay, first I'm gonna talk about the dark match, the battle royal, as I as I love to do because <laughs> we get to read a fun list of names of jobbers and mid carters from around this time. Um, points if you can remember all of these people. Uh, Primo, of course we know Primo. Slam Master J, better known as Jesse from Jesse and Festus. Kalen Croft, Trent Beretta. Who's Trent Beretta? You should ask Trent Beretta, uh, Chavo Guerrero, Mark Henry, Greg Cully, Luke Gallows, JTG, Chris Masters, David Hart Smith, Tyson Kidd. We'll see them a little bit later. Vladimir Kozlov, Funaki, Golda, Shad, Gaspard, William Regal, Tyler Rex. That's Rex, R-E-K-S. Santino Morella, Jimmy Wang Yang, Lance Archer, Carlito, Michael Q. Knoxville. That that that's a that's a shout out to the Mayhem crew. Mike Knox, of course, Mike Knox. Finley, Zack Ryder, and believe it or not, I didn't believe it. They actually showed this on the pay per view, so it is a real thing. The winner of this battle royal, Yoshi freaking Tatsu. <laughs> Yoshi Tatsu won a battle royal before WrestleMania. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's very odd. I I didn't think Yoshitatsu ever won a match. I sit corrected. Anyway, let's get to the show proper. Uh we open with actually a really fun uh match. And it's kind of funny because I hear Matt Striker on commentary. I immediately see John Morrison coming out. I'm like who sprinkled Lucha Underground into, rest, into my WrestleMania 26? But uh, here we are, because we have John Morrison and R-Truth versus Show Miz for the Unified Tag Team Championship. Uh, it's a fun match. It, it's kind of a shame because Miz is also U.S. champion at this point, so there's no U.S. title match. But, uh, yeah, this is really good. You know, it, the, the whole thing is that Miz and Morrison had a feud back in the day. And and Big Show is constantly bailing Miz out of their match, but they get they work really well together. And I actually really dug Show Miz back in the day. I loved their I loved their whole team. And Jera Show followed after that or be was before this. Big Show Big Show is always really good at a tag team because he doesn't have to be the big dominant guy for the entire match, just for how, like hot tags and stuff. But Show Miz do get the win. They do beat uh, Morrison and Truth. And uh, we move on to uh, Legacy Explodes. 
or something. They didn't they didn't coin it that. But it's Randy Orton going against Cody Rhodes going against Ted DiBiase in a triple threat match. Um, well, it's more like a two on one match than Cody and Ted disagree on who should get the win, and Randy picks up the win. It's a fun match. It's just you kind of know what's happening. Like uh, Randy Orton picking up the win is very obvious, but it, it's good. It's good. I like to see. I, I kind of miss Ted DiBiase a little bit. Like I kind of still wish he was a thing, but you know, that that's just where we are. And it was good to see like them each get like individual spotlights in this match. But uh, now moving to people who don't get individual spotlights, we're going to the Money in the Bank match. Now, uh, this Money in the Bank match is interesting. It's kind of fun. There are a lot of cool spots in it. But holy hell, is it crowded. All right, here's all the people that are in this match. You got Christian, Dolph Ziggler, Kane, Shelton Benjamin, MVP, Matt Hardy, Evan Bourne, Drew McIntyre, Kofi Kingston, and the eventual winner, Jack Swagger. That's 10 people, you guys. 10 little piggies. That's too many people for a ladder match. It's way too many people for a ladder match. Um, Like, there are a lot of great spots. Evan Bourne is really good in it. Shelton, of course, is good in it. Kofi is really good in it. I believe uh, this is the match where Kofi tried to use the ladder as stilts, which is great. It's such a fun spot to watch, but... This match is crowded. I would have taken out at least three or four of these people. And Swagger winning is very unexpected. Even though I remember Jack Swagger wins, it's it's kind of anticlimactic how he does win, though. But, you know, it, it's 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 a decent match. Probably, it's definitely not the worst Money in the Bank match we've had at WrestleMania. Definitely not the best. It's somewhere in the middle. But, guys, we have a historic WrestleMania event. For the first time since WrestleMania 18, Triple H is not in a title match. Are you guys excited? And yes, that's a real statistic. For the first time since WrestleMania 18, Triple H is not in a title match. Yeah, uh, he's going one-on-one with Sheamus. This is Sheamus' first big um, WrestleMania match. And it's a it's a good match. Um, but, you know... It, just because Triple H isn't in a title match doesn't mean he ain't going to win. Uh, Triple H does beat Sheamus. Uh, you know, it's fun. It, it's a good match to get Sheamus on the mark, but he's not quite there yet where he needs to be. He's just not there yet. But, uh, yeah, it's a good match. It goes, about, it goes a little over 10 minutes, so it wasn't like the super long Triple H matches we've seen in the past, which is good. I approve of that. I appreciate that very much. Um. But yeah, so I, it's a good match. I would definitely check it out if you if you're a Triple H fan or if you like to see some early Sheamus stuff. But yeah, um, so moving on, we we have Rey Mysterio in his Avatar outfit. I, I look forward to his Avatar Two outfit coming soon. Going up against CM Punk. Yeah, this is the whole um, this is the whole straight edge society stuff. This is when CM Punk had Luke Gallows and Serena with, by the way, Serena, I miss you. I miss you, Serena. Please come back to WWE. Please. You were great. I really, really miss seeing you in WWE. You would kick so much ass right now. Hell, be Sister Abigail. Please just come back and be Sister Abigail. Please. It'd be really great. I'd love to see it. Anyway, um, that aside, this is this is the whole bit with um CM Punk singing happy birthday at Rey Mysterio's daughter and being super creepy, being like the straight edge Jesus. It's uh it's a good match. You know, it's it's really a lot of fun, but um it, it's kind of short. It's kind of short, unfortunately, especially where when we see where a lot of the time run on this WrestleMania went to. We'll get to that in a minute, but um. Yeah, but CM Punk does get, uh, I mean, Rey Mysterio does get the win because I'm pretty sure, uh, it doesn't say it on the Wikipedia, but I remember them saying it. if Rey lost, he had to join the Strayed Society. And Lord knows that's not going to happen at WrestleMania. I think it happened afterwards. Like, uh, I think I think it was either Rey joins or Punk gets his head shaved. So I know that happened sometime after WrestleMania, but it wasn't here, which is a good thing. Um, 
but yeah, it was a fun match. I, I kind of, you know, I would like to see a little bit more from it because I these guys can go. Mysterio and Punk, obviously. Uh, all right, before I get to the next match, we're about halfway. Let's talk about the Hall of Fame this year. Hall of Fame, it was, I hate to say it, it's kind of the first real lackluster Hall of Fame class we've had. I don't say it to disparage anyone that was inducted this year. I'm just saying most of these people in the Hall of Fame did not have a huge WWF background. It, that that's that's just how it rolls. Um, we had we had the headliner Ted DiBiase, obviously a million dollar man, one of the best of all time. Um, he had a great speech. I do remember his speech being really fun. Um, we also had Antonio Inoki being inducted this year by Stan Hansen. Really, really awesome. But, you know, Antonio Inoki was never really part of WWF, WWE. And I think, you know, this is a lot of just getting guys in the Hall of Fame that should be in the Hall of Fame, even if they haven't been in WWE. Uh, Wendy Richter got inducted, which is good. Oh, actually, the uh, the Wikipedia forgot a person on here. That's odd. Okay. But Antonio and uh, Wendy Richter get put in by Roddy Piper. Of course, uh, former women's champion. You know, I believe she was the um, the women's champion who won at WrestleMania one. Although I remember her speech being a lot of saying girls just want to have fun, just saying it a bunch of times. But yeah, I mean, good for Wendy Richter. That was awesome. Uh, Mad Dog Bashan got in uh, with Pat Patterson inducting him. I'm surprised we haven't gotten Luna at one point. I'm shocked because Luna Bashan should be in the Hall of Fame too. Um. Gorgeous George, the original Gorgeous George, got put into the Hall of Fame, um, former AWA champion, was never really in WWE, but kind of cool because uh, I remember they had um, uh, his ex-wife accept the nomination for him, and she she was okay, you know, for an older woman. She, she did a good job accepting everything. And, um, of course, we have uh, Stu Hart. Stu Hart got inducted. Um, by the entire Hart family, and there were a lot of just great stories about Stu. You know that well deserved, especially with the storyline that we have going into this year's WrestleMania, and also Bob Euchre, Bob Euchre, Mister Baseball, got put in the Hall of Fame this year, and Bob Euchre was one of the best WrestleMania celebrities that never wrestled. Gonna say it, he was fantastic in every WrestleMania he was involved in just brought so much humor and and you can tell even if he didn't know anything about wrestling he knew how to entertain and i remember his speech was fantastic if you haven't seen um this year's hall of fame just watch the bob Euchre stuff watch bob Euchre, watch Stu hart and watch ted dibiase those are the ones i remember being really good but um they show a few clips of this during wrestlemania bob Euchre's speech was fantastic now Back to the card. Um, this is the huge problem with this WrestleMania. This match right here. This match is right in the middle of the WrestleMania. It sucks out all the wind from the sails of of the good coasting we were going on. Because you know, not not every not nothing was stellar, but nothing was you know shit. Except this. Um. Vince McMahon in a no holds barred lumberjack match against Bret Hart. Um, th- I mean, if you if you know the history of this match, Bret can't wrestle. He can't. He's had strokes. He can't take a single bump. He can't do anything except deliver offense. So this is mainly this is a match mainly to kind of stroke Bret's ego, and to have him beat Vince McMahon at WrestleMania. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a good moment. That should happen. But this match is over 10 minutes long, you guys. Um, This match, I, I'll, the tag match I talked about was three and a half minutes. The triple threat match was under 10. Rey Mysterio versus CM Punk was six and a half minutes. The 10 Diva tag we see is less than five minutes. This is over 10, and it should not have been. If this was a five-minute squash, it would have been 
perfect. Because what what happens is Brett comes out, Vince comes out. Vince says, "Ah, uh, Brett, I bought your whole family." <laughs> And he brings out the entire Heart Clan. He they surround the ring like lumberjacks. You got the Heart Dynasty there. You got Natty, D.H. Smith, and Tyson Kidd. They're they're all there. And Brett grabs the mic and says, "You know, I knew you'd try and pull something like this, but I I know the Hearts. You get you guys get paid up front. You guys cash your checks." And they all nod. They're all like making the money symbols. And and everyone's thinking, "Oh shit." Brett's screwed because Bruce Hart is the referee because, of course, it's Bruce Hart. If you've read Brett's book, you knew it had to be Bruce fucking Hart. Um, but And then Brett says, guess what? They all told me about this. We know. We just took your money, and I'm going to kick your ass anyway. That should have been the end of it. Brett should have kicked Vince in the dick, spit in his face, put the sharpshooter on. That's it. That should have been the entire match. Bret Hart gets one over on Vince, kicks him in the dick, makes him tap out. That should have been the whole match. But for some unearthly reason, we decide that Bret needs to work over Vince. There's shots with a crowbar. There's steel chair shots. There's Bret teasing the sharpshooter three times. No, I'm sorry. You don't need to do this. You don't need to protect Vince. Because Vince didn't throw one single punch at Bret Hart. Because he can't. Uh, I mean, it was kind of cool seeing Vince get a heart attack from... Excuse me. The move, the heart attack, from uh, Tyson Kidd and D.H. Smith. It was cool to see that. I'm okay with that, but... This is over 10 minutes long, you guys. At one point, Brett actually sits down in the middle of the match. This match killed the entire crowd, and they didn't get back into it until maybe halfway through the Cena match. Maybe. Uh, th this is just poor planning. This match was just poorly planned, poorly executed. Uh, yeah, Brett wins. Shocker. Of course he does, but uh, it, it 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 ruins this WrestleMania. It dra it drags everything down around it. Speaking of dragging everything down around it, Chris Jericho, the World Heavyweight Champion, wrestles Edge to utter silence. the The crowd is so just drained, not from excitement, just by being bored. And Jericho and Edge have to really, really try and get everyone back into it, but that's not the kind of match they were supposed to have. Like, maybe if you did the Money in the Bank match after this, that could have brought the crowd back up because there's a lot of high spots in that. But I, it, this match was just... This whole mania was just spaced out improperly. It really was. Um, Jericho and Edge have a good match. It's perfectly fine. Especially Jericho gets the win. Very rare to see a heel retain at WrestleMania, regardless of when it is on the card. It's very rare to see that. And Edge got the last uh, the last word by spearing Jericho off the announce table. But it's a fun match. It really is. Like they play off Edge's injury. He just came back from. It's it's good. It's a good. It's a good time. It really is. Um, the next match. Now I know a lot of people are going to hate on this match, and they're are plenty of reasons to do so. I will say the finish, it, it, it made me feel feels. I'm not going to lie. It's a 10 Diva tag team match, so you already know you're not going to get a five-star classic. It's Lay Cool, Maurice, Alicia Fox, and Vicky Guerrero making her WrestleMania debut against uh, Mickey James, Kelly Kelly, Eve Torres, Gail Kim, and Beth Phoenix. Uh, now, this is when Vicky is the assistant to the general manager on SmackDown, so she's got a lot of beef with a lot of the Divas and stuff like that. And I'm still saying Divas because they're not women's wrestlers for oh, a couple WrestleManias now. <laughs> just kidding. But um, this match is just a finisher showcase. It really is. Like, you see Maurice hit the French kiss. Alicia Fox actually hits a bitch and scissor kick. I'm not going to lie. I kind of wish she would do it again. Because she hits a really bitch and scissor kick in this match. Um, 
But yeah, the finish is Kelly Kelly's laid out by Beth Phoenix. Or yeah, I think it's by Beth Phoenix. And Vicky gets help from Lay Cool to go on the top rope and do a frog splash. And I'm not going to lie, I know it's bad. It, but when Vicky's up on the top turnbuckle and she does the Eddie Guerrero thing and points up, I started to roll tears. I'm not going to lie. I'm almost doing it again thinking about it because it's the triumphant moment the character of Vicky Guerrero should have gotten. I'm serious. Vicky Guerrero was one of the biggest heels in wrestling at this time. Seriously. Like, you had to do some despicable shit to get more heel heat than Vicky Guerrero at this point. And she gets the win, and she gets to do the Eddie taunt. I'm like, that, that's just great. And I remember thinking that when I saw this the first time, and I think it again. Because it's a 10 Diva tag. You're not going to get an individual Diva title match, so nothing really counts. I hate to say it, nothing really counts for this. This, It worked. It absolutely worked. This match was timed okay. I would have liked to see a little bit more action with the same finish because a lot of these girls can really wrestle like Mickey, like Gail, like Beth. Michelle McCool was really good. So was Maurice at this time and Alicia Fox. I would have liked to see them wrestle a tiny bit more. But the finish, I think, was, was good. Probably my favorite finish on this card. And I know that sounds odd, but I mean it soured a little bit because Kelly Kelly doesn't keep her shoulder down. What are you going to do? <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but move, moving on. Let, let's move on. You know who still is in the title match, you guys? John Cena! Yeah, John Cena is still in the title match because, of course, he is. So now he and Triple H have matching streaks of, I think, seven WrestleManias in a row. But, yeah, uh, Cena is in the title match. He uh, is going... Uh, to try and get the WWE Championship back from Batista. Uh, yeah, it's a good match. It's kind of boring, though. It's a lot of power on power. Um, I can understand why people got tired of Cena. I, because watching this many WrestleManias in a row, where Cena has basically the same match, especially when he when you're being surrounded by other guys who have different nuances to their matches... I can see where the where the Cena fatigue set in and how he's drastically changed his game since then. Like seeing these old Cena matches makes me really appreciate the John Cena we have now, which is something I didn't expect to get while doing this project. But um Cena gets the win with the STF and Batista taps. A very apathetic tap, too, if if, if you really ask in my opinion. But uh, yeah, Cena uh, Cena does a really cool thing after this. There's a guy that has a shirt that says, We hate Cena. So Cena, of course, sees him and goes and celebrates with him after the match. John Cena's just a cool guy, y'all. He's just a cool guy. He he can't do Yoshi Tonics yet, but don't worry, he will. And he will attempt that springboard stunner until he gets it right, damn it. Uh, <laughs> now, moving on, the main event... No DQ, no count out. Streak versus career. Shawn Michaels going up against The Undertaker. Guess who wins? Um, really good match. I mean, you got you don't need to you don't need me to tell you this. You, you guys know this is Shawn Michaels' last match. He's gonna make it the best he possibly can. Because he didn't really get that chance at WrestleMania 14. This match is really good. I don't know if it's better than the twenty-five, the the one from the year before. I don't think it is. I don't even think it's personally better than his one with Ric Flair. Personal opinion. I honestly, I don't know if this is in my top five of Shawn Michaels Mania matches because you got the Taker one, you got the Flair one. I still really dig the Austin one personally. You have the Iron Man match, and you got Jericho. That's five, and I'm not even mentioning his epic with Kurt Angle. So I don't know if it's in my top five Shawn Michaels Mania matches. It's really good. It's really, really good, and especially I still cringe a little bit when Taker hits that jumping tombstone at the end to finally end the match. Uh, but yeah, it's really, really good, and 
Something I forgot that they did at this WrestleMania, which they never do. Normally, at the end of every May event, they'll have like a little recap package, which, you know, is good, yeah, especially for people like me who are watching this all over again. Helps me remember exactly what I saw. But they didn't do that this time. They just follow Shawn Michaels up the ramp, and they just show Shawn Michaels saying goodbye to all the fans, just soaking it in. And oh, it's touching. It's because Shawn Michaels, I've made no bones about it, my favorite wrestler of all time. It it's really really great to see that they gave him that moment and they filmed it. They didn't like. They didn't kind of cheapen the moment by showing a video package after that match. They just showed the end of the match with Sean taking in the end of his career. Really, really cool. Uh, I enjoyed it greatly. Probably one of the better finishes to a WrestleMania that I've seen, like like the celebratory thing. Because Taker, you know, a- after the match, Taker picks up Sean, they hug and everything. And then Taker lets Sean have the moment. Because normally... When Taker wins, you know, you see the numbers pop up on the screen. It says he's 17-0 or 18-0 or whatever he is at this point. And Taker poses and the lights go down. But no, Taker just leaves very unceremoniously. Like, we don't even see Taker walk out. We just see him leave the ring and we're just with Sean. And that's really, really cool. It's really, really good. All right. Um, so next year we are going to Hotlanta. Hotlanta for WrestleMania 27. And, oh, man, I think I remember there are some stinkers on that card. Uh, we also will also get Undertaker versus Triple H for the second time. So that will be fascinating because I don't remember how that first match goes. I know how the site, I know how the one after that went, but I don't remember how that one goes. Um, as far as other stuff, I don't remember. Like I said, these 20s, they all blend to me, so... I haven't seen them as many times as I've seen the other ones, but this should be really interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it again. So uh, if you guys have any thoughts or comments on WrestleMania 26, feel free. Hit me up at MadMike4883 on the Twitter machine. Leave some comments in the YouTube. Hit me up on Facebook, on Twitter, at Mayhem Show with the hashtag MM. And also, um, stay tuned because... We've only got a few more of these left, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting kind of hyped for WrestleMania, even though I don't necessarily like the matches involved. But, as this has been showing me, just because I don't like the matches involved doesn't mean you can't like the matches, if that makes sense. I think it does. All right, so, for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike, and this has been 32...